So it's that most magical time of the year where skint Samsung fans who can't afford those ruddy expensive Galaxy S series smartphones rejoice because the Galaxy A34 and A54 have just launched. These more affordable mid-range blowers still boast that S23 style design, punchy AMOLED screens, stereo speakers, massive batteries, all of that nipple tweakingly awesome stuff. But the Samsung Galaxy A34 will set you back from just 349 puns here in Blighty, while the Galaxy A54, slightly more expensive, started from 449 of your great British quids. So a wee bit of a price hike compared with last year's models, but anyway, I've had a stroke of them both, and here's my early hands-on review and a side-by-side -side comparison so you might know which one is best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, if you've so much as glanced at Samsung's fresh new Galaxy S23 flagship smartphones, you may notice some similarities between those and these here fresh A-series handsets. Those materials may be different, but the aesthetics are almost identical, right down to the isolated camera lenses that poke right out of the arse. The Galaxy A34 is actually the bigger of this pair with a 6.6 inch screen, while the A54 is a mite more compact at 6.4 inches. So they're certainly more of a handful than the regular Galaxy S23, more akin to the S23 Plus. And while the A34 sports a glastic arse with a smudge resistant matte finish, the Galaxy A54 upgrades that to Gorilla Glass 5. Although I've got to say that surface is rather shiny and my greasy fingers made a mess of it in absolutely no time at all. And Sammy is offering each phone in four colours, so the Galaxy A54 comes in awesome graphite, awesome white, awesome lime and awesome violet. And the A34 essentially has the same colour options except awesome white is replaced with awesome silver. Are they actually awesome? Well that's kind of for you to decide but I quite like the limey one, it's a lot less pukey than that new yellow iPhone and the violet one isn't too purpley. And both new Galaxy A series phones are IP67 dust and water resistant, same as last year, so they should survive a Duncan too. Now those displays are super AMOLED tech, pretty much identical on both models except for the size of the buggers. As usual with Samsung, your movies look great thanks to the sharp contrast and punchy colours which can always be tempered if you do prefer a more balanced visual experience. They're both Full HD Plus screens and they both top off at 120Hz. So that's an upgrade for the Galaxy A34 and same as last year's model for the Galaxy A54. And Samsung has also upgraded these displays to make them brighter than before so they now top off at a 1000 nits compared with 800 nits like last year. And you've also got a bit of Samsung Vision Booster action to make things more clear when you're getting a lot of glare. This basically just illuminates the edges of the screen like what you can see here. The only other difference here beyond the screen size is that selfie cam cutout. It's an old school nipple notch on the Galaxy A30 floor and it's a floating orifice on the Galaxy A54 so slightly less intrusive. And both phones come rocking a tasty bit of 240Hz touch sampling action as well, so great news for gamers. And both new Galaxy A-series smartphones sport a pair of stereo speakers and they're absolute belters. I could clearly hear everything that was going on even in this incredibly noisy demo room. And there were no headphone jacks sadly, so it is Bluetooth or dongles all the way. As for the software side of things, well no real surprises there, just like the Galaxy S series flagships you get, Samsung's One UI 5.1 straight out of the box slathered on top of Android 13. You've got all of the usual Samsung shenanigans including loads of apps that mimic Google services and plenty of tools for keeping tabs on your system performance. You've also got the Samsung Knox security suite to keep your privates private. You've got an in-display fingerprint sensor, just an optical effort of course, and a bit of face unlock action to back it up. As for the storage, well, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs with both the A34 and the A54. Doubling up will cost you an extra 50 pun though. Don't worry if you are a bit short on cash though because expanding that storage not strictly necessary because you've got micro SD memory card support with both the A34 and the A54, both supporting cards up to one terabyte in size. That said, if you do upgrade on the A34, you also get an extra 2 gigs of RAM chucked in just to sweeten the deal. Oh, and on the connectivity side of things, if you upgrade to the Galaxy A54 from the A34, you'll also get eSIM support and a bit of Wi-Fi 6 action. You'll find yet more differences when it comes to performance because the A54 is powered by another Exynos chipset, the fresh new Samsung Exynos 1380, 
while the brand's behind the A34 is actually the MediaTek Dimensity 1080. Now this Dimensity 1080 was previously found ensconced inside of the Realme 10 Pro Plus and Xiaomi's Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. And when I tested out Realme's blower, I found that it could play even memory hogs like Genshin Impact on those higher detail settings and keep things gloriously smooth. So that would be a big upgrade versus last year's A33, which wasn't the best performer in the world. And presumably because it's been crammed inside of the more expensive handset of the pair, the Exynos 1380 should provide a performance boost over the Dimensity 1080 and therefore also be capable of running anything out there. Of course, you'll have to stay tuned for my full in-depth review to see if both of them are indeed absolute beefcakes at this sort of price point and also what a difference the Dimensity versus the Exynos makes on the battery life. You would kind of hope that the battery life will be bleeding brilliant on both as they both pack in a 5000 mAh capacity cell. Samsung reckons you'll comfortably get over two days of battery life from a single charge and I gotta say I call shenanigans on that unless basically all you're doing is occasionally staring at it and going oh that looks pretty. But you should still comfortably make it to the end of a very busy day with plenty of juice left in the tank. And when they do need a top up, both the Samsung A54 and the A34 support 25 watt charging. Not exactly the nippiest around, if they are fully drained it'll take about an hour and a half roughly to get them powered back up to full. And the bad news is you will have to provide your own power adapter again because all these phones come bundled with is a Type-C USB cable. Now last up, the Samsung Galaxy A34 and A54 both dish up a triple lens rear camera, but it is a different setup on both. With the Samsung Galaxy A34, you've got a 48 meg sensor with optical image stabilization, while the Galaxy A54 upgrades that to an all new singing and dancing 50 meg sensor, again with OIS. And this is a larger sensor than last year's Galaxy A53 with bigger pixels, so hopefully you'll get improved low light performance. But again, I'll have to wait till I've actually got it in my hands, properly testing it out as my full time smartphone to see if that really makes an impact. In my brief hands-on session, both phones seem to be perfectly capable of shooting good-looking pics even when battling against quite harsh spotlights. And of course, you've got a bugger load of bonus camera mods to fiddle about with, including classics like the portrait mode, you've got a pro mode, and the obligatory fun mode, which is just so much gosh darn fun. Can you tell how much fun I'm having right here? I'm about to absolutely destroy my pants from all of that unbearable fun. For video shenanigans, both the Galaxy A34 and A54 can capture 4K resolution footage at 30 frames per second. As for the rest of the triple lens setup, well, you've got an ultra wide angle shooter on both as well, 8 megapixels versus 12 megapixels. And on both phones, that camera hardware is dutifully finished off with a pointless 5 megapixel macro lens. And last up, there's a selfie cam of course, and while the Galaxy A34 makes do with a simple 13 meg effort, the A54 upgrades this to a 32 mega. That's the same resolution as last year's A53, probably the same sensor too. The portrait smarts on both phones seem top notch, and you can once again record Ultra HD home movies of your lovely face. And that right there in a nutshell is Samsung's fresh new Galaxy A34 and A54. So the Galaxy A34 will cost you £349 for the 128 gig model. Otherwise you can double that storage to 256 gigs and also boost the memory from 6 to 8 gigs for 399 quid. Otherwise with the A54 it starts at 449 for the 128 model. Otherwise you can pay 499 half a grand for the 256 gig model and both of those come with 8 gigs of RAM. Now stay tuned for my full unboxing and review of the A34 and A54, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.